I would, okay, I was told to talk about, to encourage us to, on hijab, especially when we are faced with challenges. Yes, challenges will come, absolutely. Challenges will come. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah to Akabut has said, um, and do you not do you do you think you will be a Muslim and you will not be tested? If you so Allah said he will definitely test us. So when the test comes, how do we cope? That is what I would like to talk to us about today, inshallah. So when we in like when we are in a public gathering and wear our hijab, we might be discriminated against. They, there is this presumption they have about us that we are less than those who wear hijab. Sometimes some of us are harassed for wearing hijab, and sometimes we are compared. The comparison is not even sometimes it's not even about hijabi and non-hijabi. Sometimes it's about the size of the hijab. Why do you have to wear something this long? Are you better than this person that is wearing the shoulder length hijab? So the comparison will also come. That's also another challenge that we will face. So I'll be sharing with us, especially with my sisters who are some, some of you that are in secondary school, that still have a lot ahead of you. Some tips that can help you. Whenever you cannot control what the other person will do to you, but you should have a total control on how you respond. You cannot decide on what the person who is sitting down at the uh, photo capturing, maybe at immigration officer office, will do to you. you. Cannot compare what the soldier in the NYC camp can do to you. But you can train yourself to know how well to respond whenever these challenges come. The first thing I always say is, as Muslims, our one of the biggest word we have is prayer. Whatever you are doing. Ask Allah to make it easy for you. Whenever you are facing some people that you know might harass you, pray and ask Allah. There are some specific dua in Islam Muslim that you say when you are meeting someone who can be tyrannical, you can learn some of these dua and try to say them. The second thing that I would like to share with us, which I think is very important, is polite insistence. You have to be polite while insisting on your right. My senior colleague has said a lot about the laws. The law is with you. There is nothing that is stopping you from wearing your hijab. So while having that at the back of your mind, you will now insist politely. I mean, I'm trying to emphasize the need for politeness because I don't want anybody to accuse any of my sisters as being rude just because they want to wear the hijab. Islam preaches politeness, calmness, respect. Islam preaches that. So while trying to prove your right, I don't want you to be rude. Try to be as polite as possible. Smile. Let them know that you have nothing to harm them. You're just wearing your hijab because it's a commandment of your Lord and you must obey it. So the second thing I would like to say is preparedness. At my office as the Human Rights Officer of Nigeria Supreme for Islamic Affairs, we get, although we get, we get lesser complaints compared to a hijab rights advocacy initiative, but some, sometimes we get complaints too. In October, November, December, I got at least one um, complaint in each month, and it's about core members who wear full hijab. They are full hijabis, and they don't. The entire um, call, like NYC thing is just so uncomfortable for them. So they come, they complain, and I try to, to share some tips with them. If there is somebody that we can talk to that can assist them, we try to do that too. So I would encourage you, especially when you are going for NYC, prepare very well. Somebody was decamped in December. We got the, the, the complaint too. She was decamped. Because she got to the camp and she was not ready to even comply with anything. We know as a fact that the current LYC scheme and the kits they give to us 
is not Muslim compliant. It's not something that is okay for us. So as a Muslim, you know you are going to stay in camp because you don't have any excuse. Maybe you don't, uh, people who are married and um, pregnant and have a baby can es excuse themselves, but you don't have any excuse. You don't have any health condition that can make you avoid that camp. Prepare before you go. So a long trouser that is modest, not tight, so that you have something to wear when they give you their, their, their shorts that you cannot wear. Then sew your hijab, your white hijab, that will cover you very well so that you would not be caught on our wares. Then I would also like to share the last um, tip, which is feminist. You would face challenges, as I have said earlier, but you have to be firm. Don't be surprised when you see fellow Muslims making you feel like your own is too much. What's your problem? Like, are you a better Muslim than I, than I, than I am? Don't be surprised. They would make you feel that way. But you have to be ready to be firm, to, to remain on what you believe while being polite. So I, I believe that that is very, very important. Another thing I would like to mention is the fact that in Nigeria, even though we don't have an Islamic law that is governing us, um, overall law, the ground norm of this country, that's the constitution, has said you have the right of freedom of religion. So there is nothing you can sign that can waive that right. Some people will tell you in GYC camp that you have signed something telling you that you must comply. Tell them politely that even if I have signed something, there is the constitution of Nigeria has allowed me to appear and what I have signed cannot deprive me of that right. So any other thing, any other law or any handbook of any school that is saying that you, you cannot wear hijab, that is what is wrong. The constitution, the human rights law that Haji Asalam has quoted has given you that right. So nothing, no, no other document can deprive you of that right. So I would like to implore all of us to, to ensure that we, we remain firm while being as polite as possible. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize on this politeness because I remember during my experience in the law school, and th there is this um, head marshal that used to, not even during the court, but during the stay of my law school, I used to wear a job that was longer than everybody else's. And this man would stay in front of the classroom, ready to send me out. Even sometimes when I am able to enter without him noticing, he would look for me and fish me out. So he was ready to make sure that I complied with what he wanted. But he got to a particular stage, started looking for me, and he told them that whenever they see me, they should, they should um, let them know. They should let me know that he was looking for me. When he saw me, he told me that, it will not disturb me again, but I should make sure that nobody joins me. So that would show you this, that nothing is preventing me from wearing that length of hijab. It's just that he's the one who has that power and he wants to, he just wants to take laws into his hands. So that does not mean that some institutions do not have some, some rules that they, especially they always say so shoulder length hijab, but while wearing that, we should try as much as possible to ensure that what we wear under is the jab itself. That would help you to, to, to appear and it will make you comfortable as Muslim. Yeah, that's kind of what I'll make it easy for us. I mean, so, um, as I said, if, you, if I had been rude to that man, because during that, I said there is a male colleague who was actually sent out of school till today, he has not written exam just because he had an altercation with that man so you should try as much as possible to be as polite as possible. in fact most most times these people that are harassing you they know that you have the right so trying to explain or argue would not help it will just worsen the situation so when they are talking to you maybe you can just stand watch them smile and Maybe tell them sorry or thank you, so that you can just avoid that trouble. Because most times they are not interested in your argument. To only, to only uh, like 
uh, complicate the situation. So, as I have said, let's try to ensure that we are we insist politely. That's the first thing I said. We should pray, and then we should remain firm while also preparing for all these endeavors. I pray, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, make it easy for us. May He make us always prevail over other people that are ready to harass us, and may He accept our worship. Because it is not easy when, especially when you are being compared with fellow Muslims, they will tell you, oh, that this person is wearing this size, what's your own problem? You would you might feel, you might begin to feel intimidated. So you should ask for a last help and remain firm. I pray last one of what Allah make it easy for us.